यस वी आर हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेडियो जिंदगी मैं हूं आपके साथ में इरा वेलकम टू द शो कन्फेशंस ऑफ द फ्यूचरिस्ट विद संजीव गोयल लिसनर्स दिस इज रेडियो जिंदगी 92.3 एफएम एचडी 2 एंड वी आर वेरी वेरी प्राउड टू हैव संजीव गोयल ऑन एयर विद अस ही इज द होस्ट ऑफ दिस शो टेक्निकली एंड ही इज अ वेल नोन नेम इन द इंडस्ट्री एंड इंस्पिरेशन ही इज अ फ्यूचरिस्ट एंड एंड एंजल इन्वेस्टर एंड सिलिकॉन वैली एंटरप्रेन्योर एंड वी आर सो सो प्राउड टू हैव हिम ऑन रेडियो जिंदगी टू इंस्पायर आवर लिसनर्स एंड फ्रेंड्स एंड व्यूअर्स इन द बे एरिया This program is supported by Droises NTT VC and the IIT Delhi Excellence Foundation and uh, of course as every week as usual we have Sanjeev bring another maverick on air with us another great amazing uh, mind onto this show and let's see what they have in store for us today hi sanjeev welcome to the show and hello lalit welcome to radio zindagi thank you very much era it's so glad to be on the show and for a great introduction Let's talk about our today's guest Lalit. Lalit has decades of career in technology. He has built companies, taken companies to the next level, and recently he wrote a book on his years of experience as a leader. And he talked about new kind of leadership. Now why it is so important in today's paradigm. Today humanity is dealing with a phenomenal challenge we saw what's happening in last especially in last 18 months covid has completely disrupted our lives nobody has the right answers everybody is trying to figure out what is the right answers there is a lot of miscommunication lot of challenges and even governments are struggling to find right answers so when i reached out to him and i asked him about the leadership and can the right leadership provide better uh, environment for our world to thrive and especially come out of this covid situation so lalit welcome to our show uh thanks thanks for uh, getting me on the show i am uh, excited and looking forward to simple questions from you <laughs> Well, this show is not famous for simple question, Lalit. So we always ask really tough questions. So, but I'll give you the simplest question of the show today. Do you have a confession for our audience? Oh, you call it as a simple question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let me think. A um, couple of learnings uh, in my career. Uh, one, uh, the biggest one is that uh, I realize now that. the older you get more you realize what you don't know so that's that's one one thing because i always used to say that i know everything but uh, it is not the situation the second confession is that i i wish i could have spent more time with my children when i was growing companies so i didn't do it and i regret it and that's the biggest confession i never told them that i have not spent time with you the third one is a great learning which is that when you are in a company or in a firm and you know who you are and you know what you are capable of you also know your worth in that company but when you realize that others have stopped acknowledging that that's time for you to leave that's you know if you don't do that on right time you will regret in life so you know that's these are my confessions learnings or uh, whatever happened in life so so i think i have a little uh, little different take on the learning what i realize mm-hmm. more you learn more you realize how little you know yeah that is also very interesting and and so, the other thing is you don't stop learning <laughs> you don't stop learning and you are a iit delhi alum right Yeah, I am. I was in IIT Delhi. I did my masters in electrical engineering from IIT Delhi. So, so what was your hostel? Uh, I I was I was uh, not Day staying scholar? in a hostel. So I missed that golden time <laughs> of the hostel. And and I know when you are in hostel, your your stomach is pretty good after that. Oh yeah, and not, yes. I, I was shivalik. So go shivalik. You yeah. had a great great. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Amazing friends I made. Yeah, yeah so, I think it's a great place. So, Lalit, to know a little bit about you, you grew up 
I'm assuming in that case in Delhi. Yes, so in a I was very born and brought up. Cosmopolitan environment, and mm-hmm. you have a phenomenal journey. Being president of NIIT is not a small thing. It's a pretty large, huge responsibility. NIIT is a global organization. They are in a, pretty much every single city in India, in a way. And in US, they are into almost every single major account. So big organization. Can you share just one lesson, which our or experience you have, which you which is very, truly inspiring. So, or any so story big, from your life? I mean, there are many stories which I've actually mentioned in my book also. Um, there are many things which happened, which actually changed my way of thinking. I mean, it's not that I was, I was a great leader, born as a great leader. I, I learned um, on my own. I, I saw people leading, I saw how they function and there was no training program for being a leader. You can read books, you can understand what part of it. You still don't know how part of it. So, you know, it's things- It's like the kids, uh, Lalit, you know, they don't, they don't bond with a manual. So there is no way you can teach that. No, no way you can, yeah, absolutely. So you have, you have to experience it. You have to find, you can make mistakes. So there are a lot of things happened. I have gone through a lot of adversities, um, you know, in the business when you have- Oh, you even burst. failed? I failed, uh, that's how I learned. <laughs> exactly. I want to make sure for our audience, please remember, everybody I brought on our show, except one person said the same thing. We all fail. And only by failing, which is kind of a unfortunate, I can say, or uh, it's very hard to explain, you learn and you become better when you rise from your ashes. You, you're abs- absolutely right. I mean, if somebody if somebody says that, okay, I have never failed. Maybe there are people who have never failed. I mean, they whatever they touch became gold. But I think it's not true. Um, most of the time, we find adversity. Sometimes it is in your hand. Uh, Sometimes it is out of your hand because let's say if 9-11 happened, it was nobody knew what's going to happen. We had a great business in airlines and uh, when things go bad, suddenly the whole 25% of the business was in question. So, and you have to come out of it. You have the responsibility of the people who work in your organizations to take care of that. So those are the tough, challenging time in which you start learning. You make mistakes at that time. I mean, uh, because nobody has seen this adversity. Sure. So same thing is happening in this pandemic. There are leaders who may not, nobody has seen this time. So they are taking actions. So there are some are good, some are not so. Good. So I think that the learning out of it, when you come out of it, and then you realize that I will handle it much better next time if same thing happened or similar thing happened. Yeah. So those are the great lessons for me in my life. There are things which happened in college. There are things that happened in my school. You know, I was a very poor presenter. I mean, this is one thing. And somebody says, oh, you are a very bad presenter. I, it felt bad because I was really bad in presenting in conference. It's um, 20, 25 years back. And today people invite me to speak in conferences. So somebody has worked on it. So I spend a lot of time working so on it. And can say, be learned. What I'm hearing is it's not about the shortcomings you have. It's about do you take a decision or do you make a choice to be better in something you believe in which is important for your career or important for what you want to do and as a leader you have to be a good presenter yeah and you make it a point to learn that yeah you you practice you 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 make it happen because you say why it is there with me why can't i become a better uh, communicator than what i am today so then you i have a slowly... question on that lalit when we talk about leadership, two words I always hear from every single person I talk to. The most important thing as a leader, when people look at you, the number one question they have in their mind is, can they trust you? That's a very, very good, uh, very good point, actually. I have, um, I have a complete chapter on it in my book. Oh, wow. <laughs> So if you, uh, the biggest trait or the biggest skill 
you have to uh, demonstrate being a leader is that people should trust you. And why people trust you? Because if you're transparent, if you're not, if you're not what you are, if you're showing them some other face than what you are actually are, people are not going to trust you. Absolutely. They don't trust phony. They trust you, real you. I mean, what you are inside and what you are outside, you are the, you are same. So then the trust becomes higher because then the people say, okay, you know what, what he means for the company, for me is correct. Yeah. Maybe he's angry today. That's a different, that's an emotion. Sure. But the trust comes from the actions and the transparency you build into, um, into the whole it's system of your fabric. It's a fabric. Yes. So that's the fundamental. Yeah. So Lalit, I find uh, a lot of time as a leader, you want to get things done. Because for trust, once this trust is built, it takes over the years a lot of time to build the trust. Trust is not instant and can be break, broken in seconds. But the point I'm trying to make it is for our audience especially, trust is very, very crucial for the success of the organization. And for the leader, he need to understand if his team cannot trust him, mm -hmm. nothing will happen, no matter nothing what. Mm -hmm. So question is how as a leader, what you really need to do? Are there like some formula or things you have to do or three traits of the leader? How to build that trust? Because not everybody as you and me both know is a great communicator. See, see, the communication doesn't mean a good English, first thing. If you are able to communicate your ideas to the team or to the people you are, you are talking to, that's a good communication. That means if people understand what you mean, they, it's a good communication. So the biggest mantra for building trust is never tell lies <clears throat> to your team. Right In the business, people say, how is possible? Because you can't tell everything to everybody. We understand you can't tell everything to everybody, but you can't tell lies to everybody. So that is number one. The biggest thing which I learned is that you can't go to your team and lie about something yeah, because absolutely. they will find out over a period of time and the trust is broken. As soon as they find out that you lied to them, the trust is gone. So one thing is very clear that you tell the truth. We are in trouble, tell them it's, we are in trouble. This, this particular account is going to go away. So team look for something else. That's true. Full transparency. Tell, full transparency, full transparency uh, to the people. And then on the other hand, the leader is not because he knows or she knows everything about everything. So you can't say, hey, I know this. No, if you don't know, say, I don't know. So let's talk <laughs> about this. Lalit, let's do a little bit of deeper dive. Uh -huh. In last 18 months, mm -hmm. we have seen leaders, especially around the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And as a common citizen, I felt betrayed so many times. I felt people are not providing us the right information. Mm -hmm. And I try to understand the psychology, why they do that, why a leader in spite of being an amazing leader, says things. So one thing I realize is fear. fear. They don't want the team and the people around them to be in the fear. So that's one reason I find, which is a negative and positive because if your team is in fear, you know things will fail. Irrespective of whatever you want to do, you don't want the morale, you don't want the team the team spirit to go down doesn't matter because we both understand being as a in a C-level positions is money comes and money goes. Customer comes, customer goes. We can continue to have more revenues, less revenues. But if you don't, if you lose team, that's everything. Mm -hmm. In any business, doesn't matter what business you are in. Your core team is everything. That is your IP, not the software they have built, not the, uh, some bunch of line of source code. It's the team because team Absolutely. makes things happen. So one challenge I have, and the question I want to ask is, how a leader, how should a leader communicate and provide transparency without being worried about the fear? 
Now I'm going to bring that to a like environment in US, India, Brazil, all the countries in the leaders mm -hmm. level, you know, we were told don't wear a mask because there was no mask available. Then mm -hmm. wear mask and don't wear mask. Very simple example. Then get vaccination, don't get vaccination. So there's a lot of confusing information. And I'm assuming the base or the bottom line is fear because they don't want infrastructure to fail. They don't want system to fail. They don't want people to be worried. They don't want people, you know, in fact, as you know very well, I don't know if you have read it or not, gun sales are record high. You can't buy, you can't buy bullets. If you don't know, it is 10 times more expensive than it used to be before COVID. Mm -hmm. What that shows you, people are fearful. People are scared for their lives. Now, in such a scenario, which is such a complex intertwined situation, how a leader, how can a leader be transparent? Well, I think you brought a very good point. <clears throat> so, so let's let's analyze the situation in a different manner. <clears throat> so here is a pandemic which hit the world, and there are some countries who did well, there are some countries who didn't. Most of the countries didn't, right? If you take the the percentage wise, right? So why there are there are two parts to it. One part is the leadership, which is um, I wish the leaders would have been truthful and taken the decision based on data. You know, all their decisions, all their communication could have been a data driven. That mm -hmm. is one, which was not right. They, they had the data, they hide the data, or some countries even didn't have the data. So and then I will uh, just to summarize for our audience, what you are saying is you are willing to accept the consequences. That's yes. the data because there's a data, you know, this is going to happen, except the consequences, number one. So that's that's important because that could have saved more lives than what they have we have lost. The second thing is the humanity itself. Mm -hmm. So we, as humans across the globe, I mean, 7 billion people plus, right? 7.3. More, more yeah, more than 50% didn't accept the fact that we are in trouble, yeah. right? So that is the biggest challenge, I think, going forward will be one leadership didn't tell the truth, uh, had the fear of telling the truth, uh, had the fear of unknown, uh, rather than saying, here are the facts, and this is what the science is saying, let's do this, one, two, three. And then people, some people will follow, some people will not. In some countries, it became political. In some countries, it became uh, because of the lack of resources. and. And that's why we are struggling, why we are struggling today. I was hoping, to be honest, I was surprised uh, when pandemic hit and when we were going down the hill from, uh, from the situation, I didn't know that people will behave like that. So many Nobody. people will have. Uh, so I, I and I'm not going to lie way. to you. I was afraid of my own life and I almost got to a point to buy a gun and I hate guns. Mm -hmm. It's just psychological thing because your animal instinct mm -hmm. just comes. Yeah, and I understand so, that, but so but a lot of people didn't do that. See, a lot of people didn't do it, right? I mean, you you are the one you are thinking of it. A lot of people even didn't think of it because so then it is it is internal humanity comes in and saying, okay, now I have to. So the, if you support help, if you're if you're saying I will be helping others to succeed around you or helping others to save life, then your thought process change. And that's and what happened to me. I went ahead and exactly what you're saying, I go for a greater good. We started United Against COVID, raise a lot of funds, work really hard, build up pretty large team. We have almost now 1100 volunteers, help the people around the clock. It, it's a phenomenal work. So I completely agree with you, the greater good. So what I'm hearing is the second thing you are saying is, you have to think of a greater good. Mm -hmm. So accepting consequences. Second is work on a greater good because you want to be out of fear for yourself and your team. Absolutely. Awesome. You, you can't be, if you're a leader, you have to be fearless. Fearless. I mean, you have I to be. We say because... it, Lalit, but the challenge is how do you do that? And if you don't have, because there is no formula for that. No, nobody has a formula. Everybody has to apply it. Right, so it is very good. That's what I'm saying. The books will tell you what part, the how part you have to you have to figure it out yourself. 
and each person will have its own how yeah. i did it my way you may do it in it in your way Absolutely. somebody else did it in some other way uh, some country leaders will do in a different way um, so every every leader will find its own path of doing things maybe correct maybe not correct maybe correct in your opinion maybe incorrect in my opinion mm-hmm. so so that's i'm saying how is how is dependent on the leader but the fundamental principle is that don't tell lies don't get fear uh, fearful about consequences because consequences are going to be your actions and you can make mistakes you can make mistakes once twice and third time you will know why i'm making the same mistake again and again you get angry with yourself and say don't do that sure. and and then as a leader you understand it that okay i um, i had a problem here in this action now i take this you know different action i may get a better results yeah. and and that's how you improve but fundamental principles not you know telling lies uh, holding on to the information not being transparent um, having a phony face to your people and to other things being bullying people is not what will take you uh, anywhere as a leader you might you might be successful in a company the um, the revenue the the margins and the ebitas and the uh, you know whatever you call it in the business it, it is not the it's a end result people look at the end result but i think it's a time for people to look at how you achieved it it's the most important aspect it how did you how many journey people, is more important than destination destination and then what happens if your journey is clean your destination has to be good if it's not great it is good it doesn't right. matter because journey yeah. is fun journey you are enjoying it that's what i count we all know we all will be gone so alalit we have few more more minutes mm-hmm. so i want to talk a little bit about your book so mm-hmm. what transpire you to write a book and the title is very intriguing driven how you got that idea can you tell a little bit about yeah <laughs> the heart behind it it's it's very interesting so in, uh, when i left the and i had in 2018 to do something of my own um and i was thinking what will i do and i i i set up a company in management consulting and it and all this thing but that's the only thing i know right and then um when i was doing that i realized and i start looking at my last 40 years in the information technology industry i look at the four decades what i did and how technology changed and how leadership changed what did i do in different places and i think it's very interesting and one of my neighbor he runs a staffing company he came and asked me um can you help me on this and i sat down with him and i started explaining this is how i did it you know so i said maybe if i write all my experiences in the form of blogs or something i'll be good and then somebody told me why not write a book i said i've never written a book i don't know how to write a book so i picked up all my blogs and i started looking at my own life and i said okay there are soft traits of a leader there are hardcore skills in a leader and there are soft skill in a leader which sort of call the foundation of a leadership so i focused on the foundation of the leadership and i picked up those and say okay now where did i apply myself where did i get a story from my childhood from my um, experience in nit in c dot with sam petrora so i yeah we I had sam call- petrora on our show too a couple of weeks oh, ago yeah sam 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 is one of my mentors he's um, phenomenal amazing uh, so i learned a uh, first hand uh, with him from 1985 onward for four wow. years so i enjoyed i enjoyed the journey with him so i i wrote about him in the book also so it's a and that gave me and what people people have told me because i never i never slow down i never slow down in my life 40 years i have been working making things happen so i'm always kind of you know if i get stopped i get up again and you know start running so that's that's the the topic the the title driven came from that i'm i am self driven person in the sense that i don't care i i want to do things the way i want to do it i well, want to do so that's what this is so is, amazing is you know it's I, i really love the title of the book i love to talk to you uh, longer 
for our audience i want to thank you and radio zindagi for the opportunity it's a phenomenal phenomenal couple of things i've learned one big thing i learned in today's show is fear now the question is how do you define fear and how do you leverage fear and lalit gave some very interesting insight that by harnessing it and by the right leadership we can create a better more trusting environment and that's phenomenal lalit i'm sure a lot of people will enjoy this show and they will learn great things they can always look up to you and uh, look uh, go to linkedin and check lalit what he is doing check his book on amazon and thank you so much and thank you very much to all of our audience without you we don't have a show please send me all your feedback comments on facebook i would love to respond to any of that thank you very much thank you